Hello and welcome, my Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your work, career, vocation read for December 2020 and January 2021. Oh my God, we're, we made it, kind of. <laughs> to the end of the year, I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions. Oh, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angelo Lyons, but you can call me Mel. Hi. Hello, my darlings my rams i hope you are all well it's time for the work career vocation reads three levels of power i'll explain it as i go my subscribers thank you so much for returning i know a lot of people have contacted me about these uh nine card readings that i've been doing for a really long time because i run my own company since 1998 so work career vocation reads are very helpful i learned about the three levels of power from Carolyn Mace. I really have to make sure that that link is in the description box if you would like to learn more about the three levels of power and the chakras and all that stuff that you can apply to anything like a lens. You can look at anything through work, career, and vocation. Uh, sorry, three levels of power, eau de toilette, cologne, perfume, the other ways of looking at that. We are applying it to your work, career, and vocation, and I will explain that as I go. So uh, if you are new to my channel and something resonates, something that like helps, just hit the thumbs up, helps other people get the work, right? Helps other people do what I see, what I do, and maybe help them. I don't know how that's going to play out. It is a general read, right? So as always, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. And uh, comment if any of this makes sense to you. Um, funny, I actually have Saturn and yeah, Saturn retrograde in Aries in my natal chart. So it's really important that I had to work for myself, but I had to go through a lot of hurdles to get there. So if you are self-employed, I'm sort of the witch for you. I've helped a lot of people with startups and all that stuff over the decades. So let's get up in this gig. Uh, focus on your breath. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs. It's only nine cards. Let's see what I can get for you in the three levels of power. And the divine will explain this as I go. I'm just here. I am just the channel. I am just the reader. Let's get up in this game. Breathe. Locked on. Here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, one, three card. Well, let's do these one at a time. One card in clarity for the Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. What is the most dominant archetype, the soul power that is being alchemized, hopefully from lead to gold rather than gold to lead uh, for the Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, uh, December 2020, January 2021 for their work. Lower three chakras, survival, how you survive in the world, right? Putting food on the table, putting money in the bank. Work, career, vocation, right? So let's look at their, their career, heart, throat, third eye and crown, their inner passion, their hunger, their thirst, their reason for being creatively, right? Creative intuition, their career. What's that there? That's the dominant soul pattern being developed there. <clears throat> and the eighth chakra, their vocation, their calling, what really feeds them spiritually, what calls them forward on the path. Uh, December 2020, January 2021, shall we? Now, these can be a little triggery. There is shadow and light attributes written on the card. Obviously, this is the stuff that you are working on, alchemizing the lead to gold. Oh, the pain to peace <laughs> and uh, the shadow to light. I love this combo for you, actually. In, in, your work, in your work, you've got the queen archetype. Now, I've worked for queens. I have the queen archetype lifelong. My mother is a queen archetype, which to her, I'm the prince. But in my own domain, I am the queen of my domain. Now, it has nothing to do with bodily gender at all. In fact, think of a chessboard, right? Who, who's got the most freedom of movement? The queen, right? The shadow attribute becomes arrogant when authority is challenged. What? Me? Uh, controlling and demanding. Oh, you're so demanding. Of course I'm demanding. Look at a dolls, dolls. Of course I take dolls. I gotta be up every morning and sparkle, Marky, sparkle. Right? The light attribute radiates the regal feminine, uses her benevolent authority, protect others. I have no idea to which you speak, right? So that's such an Aries energy, that protector, that that uh, that feminine regality in its light. Like 
definitely like oh god okay <laughs> general manager but one who will who's got your back right who may not necessarily be motherly but may very well be strong in that sense well this is the protocol and this is how we do it right the queens keep the law while the kings are out conquering just in the tarot i'm using that as an example but you get that vibe that's really great in your career, you've got the artist, which is, I use as an example all the time. Now, the artist is part of the creative family. The queen is part of the feminine family. But remember, we're talking about energetic dynamic, not gender. Uh, the artist archetype, I use this all the time. So an artist will have their career, whatever their art is. And I'll read that in a minute. <clears throat> but what are they doing in the physical world until they are able to make that their main channel of income? And do remember, there is only one source of abundance and income, and it's the divine, right? It's source. It's the divine plan, whatever you want to call that. But near infinite number of channels through which we can bring that to ourselves. So how many artists? Like how many artists, right? are doing something else in the physical world. Now, in this case, <clears throat> you've got the artist with the shadow attribute using talent as an excuse to mistreat others. <clears throat> Naomi Campbell uh, posing, was that Naomi? Yeah, I think that was, uh, but so long ago. It's funny how long we've had cell phones. Uh, posing as the starving artist to elicit pity. Now, I know a handful of those, but the majority of, of the artists that I work with, even professionally, um, never use their talent as an excuse to, to, to uh, misuse others. Uh, but the light attribute I'm much more familiar with. And ours and I have the artist archetype myself, pretty dominant. Expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life symbolically what i do i'm a tarot artist in the sense that you know well look art needs rehearsal right repetition is the mother of skill thank you tony robbins i still want to climb you even though you're married with kids he's so beautiful uh but you, you sort of get that thing right it's like the artist the artist's way right it's it is totally heart the third eye crown as a matter of fact the lower three chakras has its own voices of um, intuition called survival intuition. This is creative intuition, the heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Like even if you're like, well, what do I want to make for dinner tonight? And you're like assessing, well, what do I have in the house? I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Oh, and then it goes down through the lower chakras and you manifest it. So this is great. This is like top notch because I love this. I have this archetype in this position. I love you, Aries. You've got the mystic. Woo. Now the mystic shadow side is fucking dangerous, right? Delusional rapport with the divine. <laughs> I can't remember this. I can't come to work today. The divine told me that, you know, no. Click. <laughs> well, I guess you don't do that. You just go click, right? That's a delusional rapport with the, <laughs> the divine. And I have seen that working in the new age, working in the, in the new age, please. I started working in the new age in what, 1990 at Body, Mind and Soul in Huntington Station, New York. Jesus, I have seen tinfoil hat wear. The design, they really need to improve the design. It's just where are you going to wear it? Uh, the light attribute revels in intimate union with the divine. So you know I keep my eye on delusions. I'm a Pisces moon. I keep my eye on the delusional part of it because I have such an intimate rapport with the divine because I pray all day long. What do you think? How do you think I get through this? Just coffee? No, there's breath work. There's prayer. There's intimate union. I ask the gods themselves. My prayer is essentially use me, right? Make these the best readings ever. Make this day in alignment with my soul's high wisdom and reality of the golden timeline, right? You know, that kind of stuff. So you put these three together, you've got like a, 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 just in the, the gold, so to speak, the light attribute, this high mystical calling that's being channeled through your heart, throat, third eye and crown with creative inspiration and to bring something into form and to help people see life symbolically with that regal feminine energy. I mean, if you can bring all three of these archetypes into alignment, and that's why it's a two month read, right? It takes a while. Then you really are looking at chakra alignment, energetic alignment, inspiration, creativity, manifestation, right? It's, 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 it's kick ass, right? It's just helpful. All right. Uh, Daughters of the Moon Tarot. We're going to look at what your internal experience is with these three, right? Let's take a nice deep breath. As we talk to the goddesses, the divine yin, the yin force, half of the universal energy. Here we go. My goddess is a fire in the sign of Aries. Harmonia, please. One card 
in clarity for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising Venus sign that has the queen archetype in their work position. How are they experiencing that? We'll put them face down. Oh, you can see now on the camera. <laughs> Nothing like a change of scene. My goddesses of fire, particularly Harmonia. We've got that artist archetype. What are they experiencing with that on the inner and uh, for their vocation, the mystic, please. What is their interior, interior experience of that in their vocation? December, January, 2020 to 2021. All air cards. All right. So your internal stuff, just even without looking at what they are in specifics, a lot of internal thought. Now, I don't do reversals on YouTube. I save that for my clients, of which... They need the nuance, right? You're going to have to sort through this. The queen on the inner, you've got the 10 of blades, which I know a lot of people think of betrayal. And in the physical world, yeah, I get that, but that's not the vibe here. This is the queen gets all the pieces of the puzzle together and has the resolution, the mental resolution, the clarity of it. Yes, it is the end of the cycle of air, but it's mental, right? So if there was a lot of overthinking, because it does feel like there is, I mean, when we get there, you'll see. Um, but it, it's working out lovely, but I get it. Um, and in fact, let's just go there. For the artist archetype, heart, third, third iron crown, you got the three of blades, which everybody says is the heartbreak card. Except to me, the five of cups is the heartbreak card, really. You know, that sort of emotional pain. This is an air card. This is about focus, getting to the heart of the matter, right? So it does make sense that whatever, however this unfolds for you over the next two months, that it's through an artistic focus inside of yourself, getting to the heart of the matter. And I do feel like this means... Your heart chakra, like my reason, I say this every time, I love Pamela Coleman Smith who created the Rider Waite deck. I mean, her life. I think somebody wrote an autobiography. I have to get my hands on it. She's one of my ancestors. And if you're a reader, she's a symbolic ancestor for you too, right? But the heart isn't broken on the three of blades, <laughs> the three of swords, it's not even bleeding, right? It's about focus, about getting to the heart of the matter. Internal, usually, right? One would think internal, getting to the heart of the matter. So with that artist card, with the artist archetype, this is contemplation. This is going within. And it brings you some kind of internal resolution. Pieces of the puzzle come together, right? Like, um, like camera resolution, right? Getting that focus to the point where things are clear, where you see the whole picture. As a result of you really going inside of yourself, uh, expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses. Well, that would be going within heart, third, third eye and crown to get into that more energetic space, right? And then communicating that, right? Expressing life, uh, the second part of that, uh, inspiring others to see life symbolically. Wow. You got the seven of blades uh, in uh, your vocation thing. And I know seven of blades is very much a sneaky, sneaky card, uh, for, you know, for minor or kind of trying to get away with something or you're so busy with one thing, you totally miss the other thing that's of value. But in this deck, it's meditation, right? It's a, it's a woman ice fishing. And if you see the sword, it, the sword, the spear, it is a blade, right? It is hovered over a hole in the ice. So there is that stillness, that vigilance, that holding there that silence right it's like because if you move the fish will feel it through the vibration of the ice so you have to be really really still so this is about stillness now, a lot of us have trouble with stillness i am a virgo sun and a pisces moon it's an awful lot of mutability for if i was born on a full moon right so for me um sometimes being still feels disempowering or threatening because I have to, and that's the ego unraveling in the stillness, right? So the more I can do that in prayer and in meditation, then you're going to get really the, the mystic downloads that you need um, as the artist that you are within. And everybody has an artist within, everybody has an inner artist, but getting to the heart of that, like what is your passion? And it does allow you to really, the queen is a leadership. The queen calls shots. She does not do what other people tell her to do. And in a healthy uh, monarchy, symbolically speaking, and if there is a king uh, in the castle along with it, is discussed, it is balanced, it's balanced yin and yang, right? In other words, the, the king has a, a touch in touch with their divine feminine, the queen, their divine masculine. And remember, this isn't about gender anyway. Very interesting read. I love it for the first readout. <clears throat> Let's get your last three cards down. 
and I'll put it all together for you. Uh, this is the Mythic Tarot, right? That was Daughters of the Moon Tarot. We did the internal yin, internal yin force. This is the Mythic Tarot, the Divine Masculine, the God Force, the Yang Force, whatever you want to call that, the other half of the Universal Energy. What does this look like on the outside, lower three chakras? Take a nice deep breath. Hmm. My gods of fire and the sign of Aries, which is to face this. And Aries, for me, please, three cards in clarity, please clarify uh, this queen archetype with the uh, ten of blades in their work position. This Aries collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, work, career, vocation, dealing with their work there, with their career, the artist, with the three of blades. Please clarify what that looks like on the outside for them. And last card down of the reading, my gods of fire and the sign of Aries, please. One card in clarity for the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign with that card of the mystic archetype as the dominant soul power and the six of blades, sorry, seven of blades. Meditation, what does this look like on the outer for them? Uh, December, <laughs> January, 2020 into 21. All right, last three cards are on the table. What's this look like? Even though, it, you know, it's like, well, we're dealing with the inner chakras and all that stuff, but this is what it's appearing like. Look, this is a wish fulfillment, Nine of Cups. It really feels like the inspirations. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so in your lower three chakras, right, your experience, how this is in the outside world, it is nine of pentacles. Now, whether that's something that's immediately achievable or not, you certainly have the plan. You certainly see the way through. You have all the data, right? It's like the <laughs> Google Maps has already rerouted you, right? It's like, this is the best way to go. I get it. I see the larger picture. Think GPS, right? It's what you get readings for. You want the larger picture, and then you zoom in on the specifics, turn left, turn right. And with that queen archetype, you have everything that you need to lead the way, right? So just remember, radiates the regal feminine, uses her benevolent authority uh, to protect others. Now, if you're a male and you're unfamiliar with that energy, just think what it's like to have all of these people in your, in your charge that you are protecting and you are doing it in a regal heart-centered way. So if you have a problem with the masculine feminine word, words, uh, I should say, think of it as more heart-centered than head-centered. Like the king is more the divine masculine. This is really divine feminine energy. So it's, it's worth it. Now, the artist, <clears throat> uh, like I said, you got this three of blades, which yes, there might be some heartbreak for an artist, duh. But on the outside, there's a page of swords. There's a new message coming in. I know people talk about this being stalking and watching people on social media, but in a career context, it's a good thing. It's like being headhunted. But at least in this way, people are sort of seeing your work or there's a lot of communication, but there it's it's like, ooh, have you seen, right? It's more like that social media people sharing your stuff or, or let's say that's even you, like you're getting inspired, you're getting information perhaps from random sources, but there are no such things. You don't know how often I'll just put on, you know, a playlist, something on YouTube, right? In the background for music. And it's like audio tarot. It's like these little synchronistic messages come to me all day long. And I feel like that might be the case because you've got the mystic with meditation, but in the outside there is a conflict. So I'm wondering with that five of wands there, right? It is, I mean, in a way it is the play battle. It's training the five of wands, it's just a five. It's, it's, it's not as horrible as people make it out to be. Not with the, it, so it's like, oh, I totally get it. So in the eighth chakra, in terms of your vocation, there might be a little bit of a struggle, right? A training thing that's going on for you. This is Jason of Jason and the Argonauts fighting the dragon to get the golden fleece, right? And that golden fleece is your nine of cups. So up here, there's this, well, could you do this? And it's not necessarily strategy as much as it is sort of the, the, the steps and the conflicts and the resistance and what you have to do to, to achieve that is all percolating up here. So continue to meditate because the divine... I mean, you revels in intimate union with the divine. You just cannot beat that in the eighth chakra, which does say that there's mystery. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's part of the, well, but how am I supposed to trust that the divine is going to get me my nine of cups, right? It's like, well, what about this? And what about 2020? And what about vaccines? And what about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about, what about? In the outer, we're on the inner. It's like, it's okay, be still. 
be still and know. Be still and know you are loved. Be still and know that the divine is on the case in this. And Aries, I get it. You're active. You're active. You're cardinal fire. You want to create. You want to create. And if you are an artist, that makes total sense, right? That makes absolute total sense. And though there may be some heartbreak in your past here, if it has helped you crack open your heart to get really, really clear on who you are and what you want and what you love, then understand there are initial stages here, messages coming in. Now, I do not associate pages with specific zodiacal signs. I will say it's element of air. So this is something via communication. You know, I have to say, when I got the job at Body, Mind, and Soul, it was like the metaphysical mini mall in Huntington Station, uh, Walt Whitman Road, across from the Walt Whitman Mall. Uh, my mom was just driving past it. We didn't even live in Huntington at the time. She's like, oh, there's this place. You should go check it out. And like that, I went in and I got the, I got the job at the interview because I knew every book that they had. Body was Vitamins mind was books i worked in mind the bookstore and soul was food unfortunately it wasn't soul food it was health food and there's only so many papaya shakes you want in one life uh <laughs> enzymes uh but but that was the thing it was like this tiny little thing that came in that i feel like if you can take this piece of information really deep into your heart chakra right just like how does this feel in my heart i really feel like you have everything that you need to make a wish come true to kind of like get your wish fulfillment on this in physical form, but as a result of you putting all of the pieces together. So what if this page of swords on the inner, however it comes in from the outside world, hits you on the inner, hits your heart and gives you this 10 of pentacles. You're like, oh my God, I see the whole picture. I get it now, at least mentally. And, uh, and it seems like you are going to see that you have your wish fulfillment, if not already in place, then not that far away of manifesting it into physical form. So there you have it, my uh, Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm a pretty neat read, actually. Because, uh, right, manifesting from that mystic down through the artist into the queen, right? Think of that process of incarnation, of manifestation of creativity. It's really lovely. So... Uh, may the Aries Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in their work, career, vocation for December 2020 and January 2021, that they may draw down uh, the guidance and the grace through meditation, regardless of conflict from their mystic within and their vocation, their calling, allowing that artist to really get to the heart of the matter, integrating pieces of new information that come in that allow them to develop the power of the divine regal feminine within them as all of the pieces of the puzzle hit their mind and come together in perfect order, understanding that their wish fulfillment in their work career vocation is at hand for their well-being and for the well-being of all. So would it be. And so it is. Thank you. I hope you like the new setup. Comment if you like the new setup. I mean, I've got kind of three bedroom house because someone else was supposed to be moving in with me and they didn't. So eh, whatever, right? So I'm, I'm going to move things around. I got a lot of new things coming up for the channel, actually, uh, particularly these last few weeks of December. So um, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want more. Hit the notification bell because I don't know when these things are going to hit. So many people are uploading during the day. It takes hours for a 10 minute thing sometimes to upload. But yeah, that's the biz. It's fine. Um, yeah, and comment. What does this feel like for you? Otherwise, wishing you all the very best and the very blessed in your work, career, vocation, December, January 2020 to 21. Oh my God, I can't believe this year is almost over, but so glad it is.